Hey everybody, I'm Ethan. I'm Ryan. This is the Magical Express. Where we bring the Disney magic to you. Well everybody, we are excited to talk to you today about Toy Story 4. Uh, this, in my opinion, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but a, <laughs> I know we're jumping right into the good stuff, but I thought it was just a great next chapter in the Toy Story series. I thought it was really good. Um, I didn't think it was amazing or anything like that, but I do think it was a, a really strong movie. So a, a next chapter, definitely, um, but it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts on it. Well, let's start from the beginning. So it picks up in kind of an odd spot, oddly enough. The movie itself starts back in time which kind of worried me at first when it started off, and I think it was nine years later, mm -hmm. maybe. I was like, what's going on? Like, is this a story, like, way back? And it ended up doing a really good job of, of kind of setting the scene for why this movie got made. And the, the flashback to start the movie involves Woody and Bo Peep and an interaction they have, kind of their departure, which really does kind of frame everything to come for the next movie. Right. And, and really it sets up the idea uh, of Woody's story kind of coming to a close, which uh, really kind of is, is the overarching theme of this movie is Woody's struggle with closure, uh, which was a lot deeper than I was expecting mm -hmm. this movie to go, but definitely uh, had a strong emotional punch for sure. Going off of what you just said, it was so interesting. And again, Pixar does such a fantastic job of making you care and feel so much about cars, fish, weird robots, rats. And what's incredible is that they've managed to make you care so much about these group of toys yeah. for four full movies. And going back to Ryan's point when he was talking about, I guess, a path that we didn't expect, uh, it was really kind of like a psychological film of Woody and what his purpose was. And it's so interesting. You look at the first movie and it's, his purpose is almost being questioned as someone tries to step into a spot with Andy. And then number two, he's kind of pulled away in a sense and everything's kind of questioned, you know, does he belong with this new family? Does he belong with Andy back? And then three, it's, man, I think everyone, most people cried. I mean, it was a tough one. I three, was, is a, three is a gut punch of a It movie. was rough. And it also coincided, oddly enough, with Ryan leaving for college when my family watched it. So my parents were bawling their eyes out. But three as a whole is moving on from what you thought your goal was in life almost. And it was, how do you move on from Andy if that's been your entire purpose? And then four, it is, okay, Andy wasn't my purpose this new toy, you know, starting to move on. And that's kind of how the movie starts with Woody's not the star of the show anymore. Um, continuously not being picked to play with. That's such an odd thing to say. But it's like, okay, so what does Woody do now? And so Ryan, Woody ends up taking on this new role that he views as his purpose, which is Forky. And so tell, tell him a little bit Tell me your thoughts on Forky, because I honestly was so nervous going into this of what what's going to happen. I love Tony Hale uh, from the Arrested Development days. I think everything he does is funny. Uh, tell me what your thoughts were on Forky as a whole. Forky was interesting because we saw beforehand, before the release of the movie, that Forky was kind of at the forefront of mm -hmm. advertising, right? We were already seeing merchandise around Forky. We were seeing Forky make it. Uh, appearances in the park just saying the word fork is kind of so ridiculous odd, but but you know it's this the struggle of what makes trash and what makes a toy and what he's kind of internally struggling that as as well because really bonnie and his family are kind of starting to treat him more like trash the thing that gets left in the closet while the toys get to be a part of right the and i think what's important to realize going into this movie is Forky isn't really as big of a character as he was made out to be. Forky is more a vehicle of telling yeah. Woody's story than he is telling the story of the movie itself. Yeah. Forky serves, I guess, as a catalyst almost in pushing Woody forward as Woody is struggling so much with being pushed out by Bonnie. Mm -hmm. And like, what am I to do if it's not to make my kid happy anymore? It's even weird seeing a different name on the bottom of his shoe, and you can tell there's such a big struggle there. And hearing Forky, who is 
turned into a toy, which has a completely different purpose of what the spork is supposed to be right. after it's used, which is trash. And so there's a scene where Forky jumps out of the RV uh, with the family trip, and Woody basically is like, all right, I'm jumping out after him because my purpose is to bring him back to make Bonnie happy. And you eventually see that with them kind of talking back and forth, that's when Woody realizes that you don't have just one purpose. Your purpose is to do whatever you know is best for you, what makes you happy, and brings that joy. And that really moves to the conclusion of the movie, if you wanna get there. Uh, Brian, explain how the movie ends and more importantly, your thoughts on it. Because this movie, honestly, the way it's ending has caused more, I'm not going to say dissension, but like some strong conversation of, was this movie worth it for, with this ending? Does this ending do justice to these characters we've known for, you know, our entire lifetime? Uh, what do you think about the ending itself and, and what kind of went down? Well, especially for those of you watching, if you haven't seen it yet, I would definitely remember you know, encourage maybe skipping a few minutes ahead because we don't yeah, want to spoil yeah. anything for Sorry you. Sorry about that. Um, but for those of you who have seen it, you know that at the end of this movie, uh, Woody faces this conflict because he does reunite with Bo Peep um, as part of this journey. Um, and essentially he comes to this, this decision of, do I go back with Bonnie and my friends or do I stay here as a lost toy and bring joy through this fair that he's now become a part of? Long story if you haven't seen it. Yep. But he basically decides... I'm going to stay essentially a lost toy uh, and have my purpose be to bring joy in, in to other toys, essentially, and to other children as a part yeah. of that. Um, and we see him say goodbye to the these cast of characters that we've seen grow over the years. And as you mentioned, you know, this is a story for movies in the telling, but it's not just four movies. It's 24 years of yeah. storytelling. When you consider the first one came out in 95 and that also explains a lot of the growth and the the sadness and the emptiness and the the confusion that Woody feels as well because anybody toy or person over a period of 24 years is going to experience a lot of life changes and a lot of life shifts so I thought the movie did a great job of kind of bringing closure to Woody um, as essentially a person we're, we're seeing Woody as a person um, just through this different way of storytelling uh, and I can't remember who said it best, but um, they, they described the third movie kind of being the closing of the arc for all the toys in general, where four really serves as a closing of Woody's story arc um, and, and deserved this extra telling, uh, which they did really poignantly, I thought, um, by the end of it. Well, to close, I think we did this with Aladdin, and I want to continue this as we continue with our movie reviews, and this summer is going to have plenty for us to review as Disney Boy, is will it. popping out a new one what feels like every two weeks. But on a scale of zero to ten, where are you putting Toy Story 4? That's tough because, you know, I, I, I want to rate it how necessary was this movie. I felt like the first three movies all served a really great purpose for being made. And I can say this is the reason this movie was made. Whereas looking at four, I could ask myself, is this a movie necessary to the telling of this story? Mm -hmm. My answer kind of leans towards no. Additionally, I find the motivations behind Woody's actions at the end of this movie a lot less compelling than some other things. Yeah. Bo Peep has barely been a part of these movies. He has such Woody has such a stronger relationship with Buzz and with Jesse and with Bullseye, and I feel like he left him so easily for a character that we haven't come to know as much. So I, I, I struggle with finding that storyline as compelling as maybe others yeah, do. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, we might not know her as well, but who knows how much interaction there were between her coming in, you know, when Annie's sister was so, so young. Right. But still, it, it definitely, I don't know, may, it feels like movies you watch nowadays, rom-coms or whatever, where things are going in a very realistic track, and then something's just a little off to make the story have the ending it does. Right. So I can understand that. And so that's where I struggle. So because of that, right now, I would probably rank it at a strong 7 to a 7.5. Mm -hmm. Maybe in a month or two I might have a different opinion. I might view it a little differently, maybe a little more um, positively. But right now I'm going to go strong 7 to a 7.5. Yeah, 7.5 was right where I had it kind of in my initial feedback. Um the animation alone, though, could bump it to an eight. It was beautiful. I mean, absolutely. It was one of the coolest looking movies ever. Uh, but I have the other three. Well, one and two are definitely eight plus. 
Mm -hmm. and, and three I have right now in like the seven and a half, eight range. So they're still squaring up. Sure. I'll see how they kind of shift as I yeah. rewatch. watch, go see four again, watch three again to kind of compare them. Uh, but overall, it, it was great. And again, we can question the purpose for why it was made, the reason how necessary it was, but they made it. And so we'll review it as the movie it is. And it was a good one. It really was. And to me, at least, it was definitely one of the funniest, too. Oh, yeah. The the joke per minute ratio was incredibly high. Uh, and the, and it, it was, was very good. enjoyable. Like it, there weren't misses. Like, it was right. a really funny movie. Um, honestly, it, it had me laughing a lot. Well, everyone, this was our spoiler-filled, sorry about that, review of Toy Story 4. Now, it's up to you. Let us know down in the comments if you agreed with us, if you haven't seen it yet. Hopefully you didn't make it this far Oops. in the video. Uh, but also, let us know if there's any classic Disney movies you would want to hear us review. We have probably all of them. And when Disney Plus gets here... Everyone will have all of them. Everyone will have all of them. But let us know. We absolutely love talking about movies outside of Disney. That's one of the, our favorite things to discuss. And so let us share that with you too. So again, like this video. Keep on commenting. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. And I'm Ethan. I'm Ryan. This is the Magical Express. Thank you.